Oh. I don't know. No. Okay. It's two. There's two shrines. The first one was set up by the 12 guys who took stones from the Jordan River and set them up on the land. And then, in verse 9, Joshua set up the 12 stones that had been in the middle of the Jordan at the spot where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And they are there to this day. So Joshua gathered another 12 stones and put them right where the priests stood with the Ark of the Covenant. Joshua's shrine is the one that's there to this day, supposedly, because it's in the middle of the Jordan. So people would have to find the exact spot in the middle of the Jordan to see where the rocks were. It's underwater. Could be underwater, could be full of silt, who knows. So I had to read this a couple times, and then I, I, none of the commentaries had anything about this. Oh. Um, what and, you're saying is that Joshua gathered 12 stones where the ark was. See, I missed that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really it's really difficult the way it's worded, and um, the 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 reason why we have problems is it's a problem in interpretation in the translation, because NIV has it worded the way I read, and then I went to the New Living Testament, and the New Living Testament has it worded as Joshua also set up another pile of twelve stones. So in some English versions of the Bible, it's really clear that Joshua set up another pile. There's, there's two instances of bad translating in um, the chapters we're talking about. That's one of them. And I think that's pretty good. Pastor, I thought, I thought in my Bible, I read that, that he instructed them to carry these stones to the campsite that they stayed overnight. He did. And then came there and arranged them. Yeah, and see, that's that's, one. that's the way the... Well, that, uh, to me, would be one, uh, right. one and not two. Yeah, yeah. So what version of the Bible do you have, Wilbur? Uh, uh, revised Standard. Revised Standard, I think. Okay, yeah, that's, that's not a good translation either. Because um, one of the commentaries I have has NIV and uh, New Revised Standard side by side, and they're both the same. Um, New Living Testament is usually pretty clear in its wording. It's a little bit clearer than the other versions. So whenever I have questions, I sometimes go to that. Um, what I do a lot, though, is go to Bible Gateway, where you can list all the English translations you know, in a row. And that's a, a good practice. Whenever we have questions, biblical questions, go to Bible Gateway and check all the English translations. Or... Um, the internet has free uh, Greek and Hebrew interlinear Bibles, so go to that too. That's interesting. Yeah. Another another strange thought, Pastor. Yeah. The four priests probably holding the ark. You wonder how long they would stand in the Jordan while millions of people passed over. Whether they got tired and accidentally lost their balance, touched the ark. <laughs> water and electricity. Yeah, yeah. Wa water and electricity. They they get yeah. fried. Oh. Um, they they could probably have. I don't think they have shift scary, because considering how many people had to go through, and we we know that there were four at a time, but we do know that the, there were a lot of Levites. So maybe they took shifts. It'll be one of those questions we'll have to save um, until we get up to heaven and say. So how'd you guys do that? <laughs> so, so don't you, I read part was like Peter 30 miles upstream where it was blocked. He read it was like 30 miles upstream? What? Yeah. Oh, um... They listed a, a town someplace mm. as far up as to where it was blocked. That was Adam. Yeah, yep. In verse, um... Uh, Maybe I was ahead. Yeah, verse 16. Oh, yeah, it is ahead. <clears throat> was it? Did I get around? Yeah. Hold oh. on. Oh. No, I get a little bit over, over, click. Okay. There we go. All right. Yep. 
So it's in verse 16. We'll find out where it stopped. Um, where are we at? Um, um, Rich had a, an interesting proposal, and I got I forgot what it was. <laughs> Bull. I, I just said when we were talking about Bible versions, I oh, oh, I said we you mean we aren't supposed to use Eugene Peterson's Messenger for clarification? Yeah, um, which goes in I, um, four paragraphs and he takes a lot of liberties. A lot of liberties, a lot of liberties. Um, Rich mentioned the uh, Eugene Peterson's The Message Bible. Now that is um, that's Eugene Peterson's interpretation and it has Eugene Peterson slant on it. Um, sometimes I'll use it in a sermon just for, you know, to add extra details. But yeah, um, probably no. He was a great author, a great theologian. Yeah, I, I, I like it occasionally. I don't use it much, but like for a new slant on the 23rd Psalms or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like all of a sudden a a little different and another yeah. perspective. So, sometimes it, it's good to, to go to that um, or the Amplified Bible just to get a, another another viewpoint, another idea. Um, okay, so nothing happens between verses 9 and... Uh, actually, Are we in 4? Are we in 4 already? Yeah. Yes, we are. Yeah, holy moly. Uh, let's see here. We're in, okay. Joshua set up twelve stones. Okay, so we know we have two shrines. One of them's in the middle. Um, then verses 10, 11, talk about the the priests, the the two and a half tribes that crossed over, ready for battle, in front of the Israelites. Forty thousand men. So not a lot of guys. Okay. Then the Lord said to Joshua, command the priest carrying the ark to come up out of the Jordan. Okay. Verse 19, I thought it was kind of interesting that they were on the eastern limits of Jericho at Gilgal. So Jericho could have probably seen him at all. Yep. And that's bad news for Jericho. Because they, they see the Jordan drying up. They see all these people coming over. Not a good thing. Because already the, um, the people in Jericho were afraid. Because they heard about Israelites, what had happened, how they were freed from Egypt, how they started wiping out people already. So they're not too confident the way it is. Chapter 5. Now when all the Amorite kings west of the Jordan and all the Canaanite kings along the coast, here you go Gary, heard how the Lord had dried up the Jordan before the Israelites until they had crossed over, their hearts melted in fear and they no longer had the courage to face the Israelites. So Gary hit it right on the head. They were close enough to see what God did for the Israelites and they're not too excited about fighting them. Um, here, uh, here, here's the other bad translation. Uh, circumcision and Passover at Gilgal. Verse 2. At that time the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives and circumcise the Israelites again. Again? Again. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, why? There's nothing left then. You, <laughs> they grew it back. You, Sorry. You, you, <laughs> you, you read that and it's like, you can only do that once. Sloppy first job. Yeah. Sloppy first job. <laughs> so, but all those all those people had died off. The first the first round of group had already died off in the desert. So now this was a new batch. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Very so, good. So this is a misinterpretation of the Hebrew, because the Hebrew word means resume. So what happened is while they're in the desert, no circumcisions were done. Mm. And like Jeanette said, the first generation that was freed from e Egypt that was circumcised, they all died off. Mm -hmm. Except, of course, for Caleb and Joshua. And Moses, but Moses dies off before the, the promised land. So, 
everybody that was born in the desert who's now coming to the promised land, they had to be circumcised. Whoa, what? talk about a line. Yeah. So technically, all the Israelites were really not Jesus' people until they crossed over the Jordan and were circumcised. So crossing over and starting over again was a pretty important thing. Right, exactly. Um, so they were so disobedient in the desert that they didn't even follow the covenant that God um, set up with Abraham. That they should be circumcised. Gary, could you hold up your, your flint spearhead again? Oh, gosh. Okay, folks. This is an Indian relic. Yeah, so... It's probably like a stone, reasonably sharp. It might even cut some paper. Yeah, and we're, we're talking about something a little bit more delicate. So, <laughs> would, would they uh, allow a, more, a reasonable amount of slips before they fired someone? Uh, would you? <laughs> there would have to be a huge number of uh, knives made. <laughs> yes, yes. Millions have been done. And, and the Levites would have been busy. But when you, when you hear a flint knife, that's right, what, what Gary has in his hand... That's probably pretty similar to what they had. They so, didn't have metal, right? No. Mm -hmm. No, so they had these flint knives. So, yeah, awful. awful. Why do you, you think that God did not let them use, because uh, the Israelites probably had some bronze or brass knives, swords? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it, it's pretty specific. Um, God tells them, make flint knives. Maybe. My footnotes say that metal knives were available. How did they know? Well, it's if, they, 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 could, they could go yeah. to historical records, yeah. but yeah. If, if the Bible tells us flint knives, the traditional way. I'm yeah. sure there was a reason maybe, I don't that it had to be a flint knife. Oh, and you know, How about the traditional way, maybe? I don't know. It could have been. Could have been. And that area is called the yeah. Hill of Foreskins. <laughs> oh, yuck! <laughs> <laughs> what was it called? <laughs> The, the hill of <laughs> and, and they are there till it, this it was, day. <laughs> it was called uh, Gil, Gilbeth Haraloth means hill of foreskins. <laughs> okay, we're turning the page. <laughs> um, and, and verse 4, now this is why he did so. All those who came out of Egypt, all the men of military age, died in the wilderness on their way after leaving Egypt. All the people that came out had been circumcised, but all the people born in the wilderness during the journey from Egypt had not. So that part of the Bible ex explains exactly why they had to resume circumcisions again. Because all the Jewish people that were circumcised died off. Circumcisions were not done during the 40 years in the desert. Time to resume the covenant. Yeah. And it's a lot more painful when you're old enough to remember it. Yes. Yes. And <laughs> what, I, what I found out was that, um, well, in verse 17, even clearer, it says they were still uncircumcised because they had not been circumcised on the way. So that paragraph really clears up that the Israelites were not circumcised again. There's no two circumcisions. So... Some other research I found out was that um, most of the people in that area were circumcised, but it was usually uh, a rite of passage as an adult. So only the Israelites did it at eight years of or eight eight days, days old, yeah. eight days old, except for this batch here. Every other civilization did it while they became an adult, so they would know what's going on. I remember when our son was born. And we were still on the fence about it, and the doctor came in and said, well, it's all done. I'm like, oh, okay. He was mm. circumcised. Yeah. He was, what, a couple days old or yeah. day old? Yeah. yeah. So, kind of like Peter Pan. I never want to grow up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good reason why not to grow up. Mm. Um, and the only civilization that didn't circumcise their, their boys or their men was the Philistines. And that's one of the reasons why the, the Israelites hated them so much. Because they thought of them as being unclean. You know, there there is a little bit of a health benefit thrown in yeah. as far as infections and 
and VD and Wally, yeah. stuff yeah. like that. There, there are reasons they have found out. Tim Sampson collect a number of foreskins to get clothing? Well, I'm not, uh, uh. We'll, we'll have to check that one out when we get there. <laughs> I, I know. I hope not. I hope not. Yeah, but he wasn't very well dressed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> we're going down the rabbit hole. Yeah, we're down the rabbit hole. Um, verse 12. So they had they had Passover, and they were eat, they were finally eating the produce of the land. Because remember, for 40 years, all they had was manna and quail. Now they ate what came from the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. And that's the day the manna stopped. So God provided them uh, with manna up until that day, that Passover, the first Passover in the Promised Land. That'd be like locusts when they two million people eating off the land around yeah. Jericho. Yeah. There wouldn't be anything left. Hmm. Um, there, and there was something in one of the commentaries I read about that too. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but something to that effect, Gary, where um, they just took everything they, they could, all those people. Okay. That'd be like going to Chrissy's home ec class and getting the cake that the boys made. Now, now, let's not get out of control. <laughs> <laughs> would, would that be edible? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It may not look pretty, but you could eat it. Okay. <laughs> All right. um, the, teachers, the, the fall of Jericho. Together. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? And he replied, Neither. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, what message does my Lord have for his servant? Now, some trans English translations don't capitalize Lord, in which case um, Joshua would be addressing the angel directly. Okay? In NIV and the majority of English translations, Lord is capitalized. So what Joshua is saying, he's saying to the angel, what message are you bringing me from God? Okay, and that's that's more likely what happened. Another translation problem. Um, the commander of the Lord's army replied, Take off your sandals, for the place where you're standing is holy. Didn't we see that before? The bush. The, the burning, burning bush. bush, exactly. So, another, another parallel of Joshua to Moses. Okay? Um, where Joshua is standing on holy land, and it's holy because God is about to do a miracle. And we're going to find out what that miracle is in chapter 6. So I think my final thought was yeah. that jo uh, Joseph would be elevated after everything that went so well until the knife came out <laughs> for the people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, he just, he just tells them, you know what? For 40 years, we disregarded the covenant that God made with us. He's now taken us to the promised land. It's about time we started paying attention to God. So they went through it. They healed. And then in chapter seven, uh, chapter 6 or 7, they'll take care of Jericho, or God will take care of Jericho. So pretty, when I first started reading Joshua, these, these chapters, I for that, it's just going to be boring, but there's some pretty interesting stuff in here, I think. Um, unfortunately, part of it is due to bad translation, but at least there's camp commentaries to back us up, and if we read it very closely, we get the true idea of what happened. So, any questions? We'll get through three, three chapters. Thanks for being there. Oh, you betcha. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Good to see you, Peggy. Good to see you from Florida, Chris. Thank you. You've got this nice orange glow to you, so it must be warm down there. <laughs>